Good morning from Houston um, and good day to everyone around the world. We're on broadcasting here on YouTube and Facebook, so we will have a global audience today. This is the IDC virtual panel discussion on the IDC DDR Plus. Um, this is a project that was started uh, about three years ago. And as we hear every day about the uh, need for increased efficiency within the oil field and, the, and as a result of that increase digitalization, um, it became obvious, as I said, about three years ago, um, that the daily drilling report needed modernizing and needed digitalizing. Um, as we go through our presentations today from each of the panelists, um, please ask questions. You'll be able to do that on either on YouTube or Facebook. And when you do so, if possible, please uh, tell us who the question is for directly. Um, I will be reading short bios for each of the, the presenters on the panel, um, but there will be full bios for each of them available on the IDC website. Um, so this started three years ago and we thought it would be very important to start with to say, why, why are we doing this? And um, ideally we, um, we wanted an operator to tell us why the DDR plus is important. So we're very grateful to have with us today, Jonathan Lightfoot from Occidental. Um, Jonathan is the senior engineering consultant at Oxy. Um, he's got a mechanical engineering degree from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. He's been with Oxy for nine years. And prior to that, he was 15 years with an independent directional drilling company. Um, his current responsibilities amongst other things include wellbore positioning and engineering training um, so over to you, Jonathan, to tell us why this DDR Plus is important. Thank you. Uh, first off, on behalf of Occidental Oil and Gas, I'd like to thank IADC for the opportunity to be a part of this distinguished panel. Uh, IADC has been doing great work in a number of areas related to drilling reporting and data quality stewardship. And for me personally, I believe that consistency in reporting is a critical facet of uh, advanced data analytics, drilling automation machine learning and performance-based reporting. Um, we need to have accurate detailed activity codes that are broken down further that are also backwards compatible with historical data, allowing us to take physics-based models of hook load torque and pressure and using those models against actual rig data while drilling, tripping, reaming, cleaning, running casing and tubing within the well bore. And uh, so that's a, that's a critical piece. I've uh, been really impressed with the work that's been done. I certainly encourage all the rig contractors to start to adopt DDR plus so that we can uh, get more consistency among all of our rig fleets and the industry can work towards uh, improving the way that we report on the drilling assemblies and the, uh, the completion assemblies and everything that we're doing and expanding the entire uh, data um, quality and performance. I think that standardization is, is really going to allow us to have performance measures that will help us better understand operational dysfunctions and it will allow us to stay, um, you know, on track and reduce drilling costs, efficiency, and further push the envelope. Um, as we've done in the last five or six years, you've seen, you know, huge uh, gains in, in drilling performance and, and operational efficiency. And I think this is just one step further to allow us to really focus on, uh, you know, the next next step change in performance. So that's that's from an operator's perspective, but we need to all work together. And, and it takes time. Understand that there are some um, some challenges with implementing new uh, systems, but we just need to work through that. And, and hopefully, in the coming year or two, we'll have uh, consistency among all the rig fleets. That's it for now, and I'll be happy to answer questions later after the presentations are over. That's great, thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, so Jonathan said, um, there are challenges with new systems and we thought with the DDR Plus being available for over a year now, um, that we were good to provide industry stakeholders with an update as to how it can be implemented and how are the people progressing that have implemented it already. So we'll be hearing later from a couple of contractors that have done that. Um, but first of all, we're gonna hear from two key characters in the whole story uh, from the beginning of the DDR Plus project. Um, so this really is to talk about 
how was this designed and how was it generated? How, do, how did we get to where we are now? Um, so the two people that were, were key parts of the team from the beginning, um, the one is uh, David Shackleton. He's the region manager for the Americas of IDS, which is Independent Data Services. He's based in Calgary. He has a BSc in physics from the University of Dublin in the UK and a teaching degree from Cambridge. And he's a certified petroleum data analyst. And then this next section, he'll be tag teaming with Robert Van Kallenberg, who's a mechanical engineering manager with Noble Drilling. He's been with Noble over eight years. He was with uh, Houseman before that. He has several rig design patents. And until recently, Robert was also the chairman of the Advanced Rig Technology Committee here at the IDC. So over to you, uh, David and Robert. Thank you, Robin. And uh, thanks to the IDC for allowing us to be part of this panel and um, being part of this project. Uh, it's been a great journey uh, the past three years. Um, and hopefully we have something that's uh, really going to benefit the, the whole industry. So we're going to talk a bit about what it is and how it came to be. Um, well, what it is, it's, it's still the old uh, tower sheet uh, that's been around for decades. Um, the, the agreement between um, the driller and the operator as to what happened uh, the previous day uh, still that the, the big difference is that it has a standard digital format um, and if you look at it uh, it looks a bit like this uh, this is xml code um, it's human readable you can just about tell what it's saying if you if you concentrate uh, and it's obviously readable by a machine um, the particular xml code we chose was witsml um, which is a markup language similar to HTML, HTML for the internet. Uh, WITSML is uh, for specifically for oil field uh, data. Um, the version of WITSML that we're currently using is 1.4. Um, WITSML is based up of lots of different objects, they're called, that uh, contain information about these different areas. And uh, we can see that the DDR plus is made up of these particular objects. It's, it's, it's got to have information about the rig, the well, the well bore, the well bore geometry, the tubulars, the trajectory, BHA, and finally the, the report itself. Now we found that this object, the ops report, um, is great for the operator, but it's not great for the drilling contractor. For example, it doesn't have the towers, doesn't have the the, uh, the, the shifts. So we tweaked the ops report object and made this new object called the IDC DDR plus, uh, which describes uh, things specific for the, to the DDR plus. I'm going to pass this over to Robert because this bit's complicated. <laughs> well, I leave always the complicated stuff to David, but uh, just to, to show you how it looks like uh, if you open, uh, I call it an object in there, if you look at the uh, the which code, but you can see, for example, crew's full name, crew's position, crew number ID, uh, number of working hours, whether they were injured before or at the job, and those things closely match the paper version. Uh, so this one example, what's in there, and you can see now it's suddenly machine readable. These things are now being logged. If we go to the next slide, um, then, for example, if you take another one, uh, and that's the exact way into the activity codes, because the DDR plus, although there's a lot of talk later on about the codes, is way more than that. It's actually the the recreation of the paper version, uh, and that is is I think part of the power of everything. So it brings together all those things. Um, so this is the the these are the codes that uh, uh, that are in the WITSML IDC operation code. That's the original code. We talk about that later, and then we have four new code groups uh, or levels. I think it's more group wise than level wise. Uh, so activity, subactivity, equipment, and and subactivity. So just for the people that that basically are not aware of of uh, wits and, and and XML, this is uh, how it uh, uh, digitally works. Um, so uh, you can see it's it's pretty easy to read, um, but uh, to create this uh, required a lot of attention to details. Uh, we can go to the next slides. Okay, so back to you, David. Thanks, Robert. So we made this uh, code set and, and the whole system uh, backwards compatible. Um, so we still have most of the original operation codes. Uh, we, we cleaned up a few of them, um, but 
didn't change much at all. Uh, we kept those basically. Um, we added uh, activity codes and equipment codes that relate to those operations and then sub activity and sub equipment codes. For example, uh, if the operation code, the big code, overall code is drilling, you may be drilling a head, rotary with a land drilling rig, and I can't read that, uh, but some basic, uh, some detail uh, surrounding the equipment and the detail surrounding the activity. Now, uh, one thing we did, uh, we, we made sure that these sub activities and activities included rig state uh, results. So uh, we can use the, the rig data, um, run it through a rig state detection algorithm to figure out automatically what's happening at the rig site. And uh, these codes, hopefully, uh, should work for those rig state engines. And if they don't, uh, let IDC know, and uh, we, can, we'll, we can add them into future versions of these code sets. Do you want to talk anything about this, Robert? Yep. So that's another thing we did. Um, so uh, in essence, the first code is identical to the original IDC code. Um, however, and we'll show that later as well, is we made it numerical. So the original code said one, two, three, four, and then suddenly it was A, B, C, D, E, F. So we straightened that all out. Uh, we also added the start and stop criteria and a description what the original codes meant. So uh, you can download this and you can have a look at it. Uh, this is the first try to basically get a unified, this is when drilling starts and this is when drilling stops. Uh, and once again, IDC only recommends stuff. This is not a standard. Uh, if you disagree with it, that's absolutely fine. Uh, but if you want to have something as a, a short, uh, basically get you on the road very quickly, it's all there for you to use. Uh, the other thing is the goal was to create a structure that was versatile enough to capture all kinds of existing code sets uh, and be backwards compatible. So it's not a logical uh, structure. Uh, we couldn't do that uh, because we will never could reach agreement because every party has a different slice and dice view on, on how you do that. However, the structure that we have now is based on the, uh, basically the, the code sets that were kindly provided to us by the industry and managed to capture uh, everything. So what you can do with this code set is you can recreate every single one of them and hopefully everybody else as well. Um, David can read my mind, so I just wanted to go to the next slide. Is uh, you can see the first column is the uh, uh, the original set. Uh, we did remove uh, an unclear code uh, because we found out that there was a discrepancy between on and offshore. Uh, they were using the same number for totally different activities. That was the original layer, and we added four additional groups. Uh, and the groups are way longer than that, but uh, otherwise the slide became way, way, way too small. So the granular code set, how do we create the codes? So uh, basically we start with drilling, then we're drilling ahead, we're rotating on a land drilling rig with drill pipe. Uh, so basically you build it up with uh, activities and equipment you want to use. So this code would be 2305 079 um, we deliberately did not put any effort in making uh, the numbers logical or whatsoever. This is for machine readable stuff. A machine would know that. And if you go deeper than the first column, the load on the driller to click on all the codes will quickly become pretty high. So we're very dependent on automated systems to create those codes and read those codes. But that was the whole intention of the project to make something that was suitable for automation. So this one is just drilling ahead, uh, basically on a full day rate. So that's 330517 and the rest you can leave out or just put zeros in there. So very easy to do. Um, so back to David. Thanks, Robert. So this is a, a typical example of a reporting uh, screen where uh, you would automatically um, populate these activities uh, using rig state detection and um, further algorithms to, to, to further compress the activities into a human readable report, basically. Um, so just to look at a current use case, um, 
this is a, a familiar picture where on the left-hand side there, you've got the, the rig system. So you've got real-time data coming in from that um, and further information from the service companies. Um, traditionally, it's manually entered. Uh, same with the office systems, uh, getting information from the office systems into the uh, the central database there, uh, the central reporting database, and uh, out comes the DDR+. Plus. Um, so this is a fairly simple use case um, that's probably the most common today. Um, we're then seeing uh, rig state detection algorithms being used, various systems to automatically um, build the activities and uh, fill the central reporting database. Uh, you can get dock parsing tools now and data bridges that bridge between the databases in the office and databases for reporting. Um, these are often QC'd and um, can uh, spit out performance monitoring um, charts and dashboards and so on. And using the same information, um, you can potentially uh, build the operator DDR using the same information there because a lot of it is shared. Um, the DDR Plus could uh, potentially be used um, for numerous contractors to anonymously share uh, information, so not uh, not to see each other's information, but to build um, benchmarks, uh, KPIs that can be um, used anonymously, uh, so you can see where each drilling contractor is in terms of the regional benchmark. Um, and the the idea is also that these reports can be used um, to pass information into a smart contract. Where to get started? Do you want to cover this bit, Robert? Uh, yep. Yeah. So uh, where to get started? Um, you can review the documentation on the IDC website. It is very complete. Uh, it contains a manual how to uh, how the, the DDR plus is built up, uh, the XML code. It it also contains the actual schemas, so the structure of the data. So in essence, what you have there is uh, all the information for you to start. Uh, the, other th the other thing is I highly recommend reading uh, an SPE paper, 119664, uh, a new version of IDC daily drilling report significantly increases granularity, provides opportunity to collaborate using a common digital format. Uh, which gives a, a very good overview of uh, basically what we uh, what we just said, but also dives a little bit deeper into uh, uh, into the issue. Um, and reach out to authorized DDR plus software distributors. Um, uh, I'm not sure if ABC Awesome Reporting uh, is uh, is there, but uh, there are uh, authorized DDR plus software distributors, um, and uh, they can help you out uh, if you want to build uh, your own. Uh, drilling data report based on this in a uh, in a certified uh, manner um, and you can also reach out uh, to IDC itself if you have uh, questions or remarks uh, more than happy to to hear them uh, because as stated before the DDR plus is is meant to be a living document um, the old paper version lasted 40 years without any major updates uh, the new world requires a more um, well, a more effective update strategy. So it, it will be an evergreen document uh, in, in that sense. So we, we do need the comments of the industry to, uh, to make it suitable for every situation at the moment. That was great. Thank you guys. You got through a lot of information there in a very short space of time. Um, so that the website there and that link are, are really important. Um, there's a lot of detail surrounding the DDR plus and there's a lot more information available. Um, so not only can people get on the website, but they can also give us a call at the IDC and we'll be able to help from there. So thanks again. Thanks, Robin. Thank you, Robin. Okay. So having done that, we've now, um, need to talk to some early adopters. So what has it been like uh, adopting this system? You know, what have the challenges been? And uh, so we've got a couple of contractors now to talk to, and we're really glad to have with us uh, Karma Slusarchuk, who is with Parker Drilling, 
she's been with Parker for three years. She's the Wellbore Construction Champion. Before that, she uh, she worked for White Horse Technology, for Wear Socks, for Shell, for Transocean, and for Exxon. Um, Karma is now also the Vice Chair of the Advanced Rig Technology Committee. Um, so first of all, over to you, Karma. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Robin. I'm gonna share my screen here. Give me one second. Can you guys? Yeah, we can see that. We need to be in. Perfect. <clears throat> well, thank you. Thank you, Robin, for the introduction. And thank you, David and uh, Robert for uh, setting the stage and explaining exactly what you guys went through to put the DDR class. So I'm going to take it today instead of uh, feeling that I'm doing a presentation, actually, uh, I'm going to treat it like a, a lessons learned, sharing information, and that way I will feel more relaxed on the presentation. But I'm going to walk you through what it meant, what the DDR means for Parker, and how do we went about on the implementation. Uh, we all have been, all our businesses in the last few years, at least, is data-driven operations, right? So everything starts with the data collection, data visualization, and reporting and analytics. Well, it's a whole cycle of things, right? And it's like a domino effect. Everything starts at the rig and ends up with final IADC report, which we knew it was the IADC DDR for, for, for a very long time. Uh, the why, this was, why did we look at DDR as a part of our digital platform or the roadmap is because we were already, we already jumped into the data digitalization process. Uh, the, the EDR was the, or the, data, the data source and our last step, like I mentioned, was the IADC report. And what we were seeking by counting and looking for the DDR, it was seeking a global standardized reporting process. And how we wanted to stream that process, we wanted to optimize all the data that it was input at one point and eliminate repetition of data entries. With that say, also freeing some time to our guys in the field. And when, well, we started soon after we heard about the DDR plus, we, we I started questioning who can who can give us that uh, that report? How do we go about to implement it? And I have to tell you, we started right after uh, they kick off with the format. It was there was a lot of talk within the organization, but the good thing is we have very supportive leaders that says yes, you have to go all the way from A to Z to complete the task properly. Parker is very process driven, so this was another process that we couldn't have. 95% digitalization of our data, KPIs, but we also have to include the, include the final report. When is it gonna be deployed? Uh, I hope that our next uh, conference we will tell you how is it executing, executing in the field, but we will be uh, rolling out the DDR Plus in our rigs uh, this year. So 2021 is the year for us for execution. It has been some delays as we all know what we have been through the whole world. So with that say, there is no news, to, nothing new actually. Um, David and Robert showed some of these screenshots already, but this was our life for Parker, manual reporting. So we have our daily morning report and many drilling contractors have their own. And then we have the IADC DDR daily drilling report. How does got done? We're an international company. So in many different countries, it was done many different ways. Trust me, that's how we start pulling all the information and figuring out who has what. There was no data consistency. There was good data. Everybody did their best, but it was, there was no way to compare one data to another or there was missing information sometimes. So we went from a spreadsheet, but we always relied on the EDR provider. Right, In many countries, the EDR provider was the only way for us to submit an IADC report. So reports were independent of each other at that point. I already mentioned manual, manual data entry. 
electronic, it was the electronic data because we had to put it in the computer, but there was no chance for analytics. I already mentioned lack of standardization, which is critical in today's digital era. Missing interface from global fleet operations. So in other words, we, ha we have a problem and it fits perfectly with uh, digitalization. So I'm gonna walk you through for what I, how we, a Parker, we saw it and where was our opportunity to make a change. We started with the EDR, right? There is, not, there's very, there is the common source, the RIP and the EDR, which is so important for our operations. We, my team has spoke about uh, rig state and detection, and we, all, we call them operational events. Same thing, but all that comes uh, from the EDR. We realized that 60% of that data, automated data, we could fit it into what we call D3O, data-driven optimization software. Parker did not uh, wrote the algorithms or develop the software. We actually paired up with a small local company and decided to embark in the, and find a solution and an application. A lot of that data also comes, like you guys mentioned, from the rig managers of the people at the field, 40% of that data. And then after we have that, we realize that we can produce the DMR report and we can populate the DDR automatically because they have 80%, they have, they have common data, it's about 80%. So we are not just, we have our capability to assess data anytime by having D3O be able to check for quality of data transmitted, which is critical. We're not just after the number, but the visualization capability to see details. And that's what DDR was also providing. We, you know, we all look at connection times by ringing, casing and speed, but looking at our DMR operations report data, it, there was no that consistency. At the same time, we reach out, we decided, well, maybe the DDR is not for us. Let's just stay focused on the data drilling information and let somebody else or the EDR company continue to take care of their DDR reporting. So we reach out and says, when will, in 2019, January 2019, we reach out to the EDR companies and they say, can we, can you give us DDR plus? And they told us there's two years, you have to wait for two years. So we didn't want to wait a few years because we want to complete our circle. So we decided to reach uh, contact IADC get the format that um, David and Robert mentioned, and we asked the software company to develop the algorithm so we can populate, as I mentioned. So we ended up with single data entry via EDR data feed. We have accuracy and activity logs. We have a uniform user interface for a global flea. And the bonus of the DDR plus is that it's an XML format, which enables us to perform analytics and any data that is input. So there was, what we learned it was there was that compatibility. D3O was built for an operational events engine that allows us to uh, review data. D D3O could detect the current activity with high resolution. This allowed uh, D3O to identify a majority of IADC codes and subcodes automatically. So we have our own data aggregator at the RIG side and we use it as a data repository. D3 was already produced in the Parker DMR and that the same reporting engine that was responsible for supporting the DDR plus. Why is the DDR plus better, if you will say, besides being just digital compared to the DDR? Our reports were good, but the thing is the DDR plus has additional subcodes. The XML format facilitates the standardization of the reports. Some of these might sound redundant to you, but I wanna make sure that you guys get a little bit experience from us and see how we, why it's important to us and how, why we're approaching it. Facilitates the exchange of report, um, report among, among various parties without complex and brittle business logics to translate from one format to another. Because this is SML, Format is backing by an energistic style SML schema definition of, or XSD. Validation of data enter is possible now. Automated com 
compliance checking on, on produced uh, reports is now possible as well. And in the future, if you want to do a newer version of DDR Plus, that is also possible through X, XD, XSD. Because DMR is SML format, data is readily and easily available. Data is a structure, reports is self-describing. Content of reports is more easily available for analytical analytics. It is easier to catalog reports for years compared to PDF uh, because MSL is highly compressible and is highly searchable. So that is one of the, that was our driver behind it. And that is how we see and the contribution that the DDR plus brings to the drilling contractor. EDR data combined with the IADC codes and the subcodes provide with a more comprehensive accounting for productive, non-productive, and invisible time. Just like Devin and Robert described earlier, they went on the technical details, details and I know it takes probably one more two, couple times to look at it. With that said, what was Parker's approach in the implementation? So I'm just going to break it down in two phases. Remember, I started telling you that drilling key performance indicators was a objective. We outsourced a software company to help us with the implementation of algorithms. We have, and we feel today that we collaborate with the ADR companies, but we have data independence. We can manage, manipulate, look, plot any data that we want and to the granularity that is necessary. So. The phase one was all that I explained to you. What are the synergies? How do those reports talk to each other? Is there redundancy, less eliminated, less free some time for people, less, less focused and shoot for accuracy. So, and what was the next part is the execution, execution phase. Um, no, there's no history without challenges, right? It's not, it's not that easy. So I can tell you that the first challenge for us was explaining people the importance of the DDR plus. So it took us a few months and that was during the planning phase, reporting objective, and then the execution phase, which we, is the training rig personnel on how to use the new platform, run new reporting platform in parallel to current reporting. And this has been a challenge. We have deployed, we have run these tests in our offices, how does it populate from the ADR to the DDR plus, but we haven't been able to do at this on the side because of logistics issues. And we even tried to do it virtually, but unfortunately you have to talk to the drillers and the assistant drillers. And sometimes we have a little bit of no, no great connection or a language, language barrier. So we're all looking for our teams to get our vaccination soon so the key players of the DDR plus team can go to the size and roll, roll this out. So with that say, it's a pleasure for me to be able to share a little bit. Uh, feel free to reach out to through IADC or Parker Drilling and we'll be happy to share the things that we have uh, implemented, learned. We can share who does our um, software. Uh, so where do we get our software support? This is no, we don't see this as a competitive advantage, but we see this as a collaboration for all the drilling contractors around the world. So thank you guys. Great. Thank you. Donna. Again, lots of information. I'm sure that's going to generate a lot of questions as well, because that was clearly a challenge, which it's great to, to see it being a success. Um, thank you. So, thanks, Karma. So over to our next um, contractor. So we have with us Bernardo Braunstein, um, who seems to have the perfect combination actually here of experience. He's had 17 years working both in IT, but also in offshore drilling operations. Bernardo's with, uh, with Noble Drilling. He's been there nine years and he's now the performance systems specialist. So over to you, Bernardo. Morning, everyone. Can you guys see my screen? Good morning. Yes, we can now see. Yep, we can see it fine. All right, all good. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you uh, for the introduction, Robin. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be uh, part of this initiative from IDC. And IDC uh, 
technology committee as well, working towards uh, uh, digital transformation. I know it's a, it's a huge step to have a standardization of the data. And uh, we're looking uh, forward to, to make more progress and complete the implementation. I have the presentation here uh, separated in the, in the few uh, parts. So I have first uh, just, uh, just what we have done on the DDR Plus so far, what we are planning to do in the future, what are the challenges and opportunities for improvements, and also the vision, what, uh, what's all the benefits that we see that we can take from DDR Plus as well. So kicking off here, let me just move this screen here on the side. So here is the data structure, right? So nobody DDR Plus implementation and goal is really providing a higher granularity in time codes and standardized report system to transmit to operators. So Noble, with support of IDS, have mapped IDC DDR plus codes and implemented into Noble time code activity level. So you can see here on the left side, I have the IDC DDR plus mapped, and on the right side, the Noble drilling codes. We use the IDS report system. And what we have done so far, we mapped this uh, market operation, 28 time codes that we have in DDR plus, and we have mapped those into our activity sub time code one is just uh, the name that we call for all the all the activities in our system so uh, here's the comparison of the ddr plus and noble time code operation you can see i did this idc ddr plus there are 432 options in noble we have 318 options of uh, operations just to give a sense of the of, of the gap that we're looking to fill. Yeah, so this is a, just a screenshot of the, our system the, and how we map it, this, uh, this time, time code in our system. We have IDS uh, developing a tool in our system that we can map for every single operation that we have on board, what would be the IDC uh, DDR plus codes. In that example on the screen, you can see on the, on the right side, the IDC codes, that represents the operation level of the, of the IDC DDR. And you can see, for example, the tripping, you can see the first uh, record is a tripping, primary time code, and we are, we are tripping with drill pipe. So on the IDC ops codes, it's gonna be a trips, it's gonna be a, a trips operation. And you can see also the second line, trip with BAJ, it's gonna be a trips as well. So this is the, I, I'd call a light deployment because we are in the first level of, of categories on the IDC DDR plus. Okay, I'm gonna show on the next uh, step here, what you're looking to implement in the feeder is all the other activities that you have available, IDC DDR plus, we want to deploy in our system to be able to map activity code, the subactivity code, the equipment code, and sub equipment code. So I just created here uh, an example for the first record tripping with drill pipe. So you can see tripping case of whole unrestricted speeds, right? These one, these two categories that we have in indoor right now in our noble system, it's gonna be uh, broken down into four different categories. And that's gonna give us uh, much more information in terms of uh, business analytics and data analysis for all this data. And that is the next step that we're moving towards to, to more, to have a extra granularity required to meet DDR plus standards. Okay, I have some additional information about the implementation process. So what can be done to facilitate our future implementation and help us on the future data analysis? I have just selected two items here. The first one is include description, start and end criteria for all code levels. Uh, David and uh, Robert, they mentioned on their presentation, they have a description for every single operation level. And uh, my, my comment there, it would be interesting to have also 
the description starting in particular for all the other uh, levels is something that we can work together. We can help and uh, and and have uh, formalized standards. So all the code application across the board will be exactly the same. So we couldn't have a clear definition for RDC operation code. Good example for for this specific uh, uh, definition, I can. I can give an example of connection code, right? The, this can be assuming then we have some KPIs that we make the connection, uh, it's gonna be a drilling connection, but uh, can be also uh, a makeup connection during the tripping in. So just this kind of information, this more detailed uh, definition of the codes that will help to standardize all the, all the operations, all the drilling contractors to use the time code on the same way. Right. So another item would be the, the logical hierarchical structure. So noble report system uses structured data model, which guides the user to select the operation options during the code assignment. So for example, let me explore here. So I just put here a simple example showing uh, how that would work, right? So we have a, a drill ship and we have, can have planet or unplanet uh, events. And then we have different type of activities like tripping, drilling, or rimming. And for specific tripping, can be running the hole or pulling the hole that's gonna drill down for restricted and unrestricted. And if it is unrestricted, it can be uh, any of the, of the subactivity level three. This is just an example, right? Uh, certain operation modes can be automated from rig sensors and but some of the some of the operation codes and records in our report system is still relying on the manual input. So the hierarchical structure will have the guys on board to determine what is the operation and facilitate them to input this data since we're still relying. And I, I totally agree the, the future is gonna be hundred percent digitalization, get all time codes in, in our system on automated way, but right now to facilitate our implementation, it would be nice to have a hierarchical structure so the guys on board will, will easy get this data into the, into the system. Yeah, so moving forward. So this is the IEDC DDR plus that uh, David already mentioned before. Just gonna show here um, one example, like planet on planet on time or something that's uh, we would propose to, to create another category that uh, all the other operation can be planned and planned and uh, create another category that could call uh, uh, a rate code that could be paid full day rate, uh, reduced rates, unpaid or off the contract. Yeah. So that's another slide here that I love to, to talk. Every time we talk about data and, and if, I see this so important, so interesting and important. Sometimes people don't have the, the visibility and, and have the clear uh, information, how important is the structured data, right? So data preparation accounts for about 80% of the work of data scientists. So to make sure uh, we can utilize the data into the business intelligence tool that you have on, the, on our companies, the data needs to be well restructured and accurate to deliver meaningful insights. So having IDC DDR plus already structured is a great step towards uh, uh, time codes, standardization and, uh, and usage of this data on the right way. And this, uh, this last slide here, I, I had some talks with the guys uh, of the, on the comedy as well. And it's very interesting what we can do with all these data, right? Uh, I didn't want to put pros and cons because uh, I couldn't see cons actually. So I put as a challenge. So we have pros and challenges. So the pros, the, the first pros, if we can have uh, an entity that can collect all these data from the drilling contractors and, uh, and have a data uh, a database that can be organized 
administrator and share it with the industry, of course, uh, we can we can have all the protections and confidentiality of the data, but we can still do some performance benchmarks that are gonna help us to rank the performance outside of on our companies. Right now, uh, some of the companies, it, we, we just compare a rig uh, between our fleets, right? We don't compare to other water rigs. Sometimes the operators, they do. So the operators, they have visibility whenever they send out a tender, they, they will have uh, information how all the rigs they're performing. But right now, we rely on the operators. So we, we, we need to get the advantage of the data and share to improve the industry overall, right? The second bullet the process, but sharing data to improve industry operations. I'm not saying just uh, drilling uh, contractors, but uh, why not sharing the data with the operators as well? So, so why, what they can get advantage of this database that we have uh, in place. And of course, drive drilling cost reduction for projects to be considered economically feasible. It's always, <laughs> it's always a, uh, a good point in pros and we're going to get advantage of the data. Sometimes we do some projects, we collect the data and after we start analyzing the data, we're going to see new benefits that we are not looking before we, we deploy the, the project. That's very interesting and I've seen that many times. So on the other hand, the challenge will be identify an entity responsible to consolidate and then administrate the database. So I say maybe IEDC or another uh, third-party company could receive all this data, transform the data, and uh, maybe create a ranking of all the, all the performance of, uh, of the rigs for certain KPIs and distribute. So all the companies will see the ranking. They will not see the names of the company, but they will see where they are placed in the overall ranking for this specific KPI. Uh, and the other challenge is gonna be break the data share paradigm. So uh, a lot of companies, they are very afraid to share data and I really understand, but so we don't get the benefits of some of, of our data power, I'd say, because we, we can do a lot as, a, as an industry and working together towards the same goal. But if we, every company just gets the data and store the data for your own, we have our own benefits. But if you work as an industry and work together, we can learn together. And uh, these difficult times, we always can improve uh, together. And uh, I see that's a, that's a huge, a huge step uh, toward uh, performance improvement as well. So that's Thank it. You. Yeah, thanks, Bernard. Some very interesting points there about collaboration and the sharing of data. Uh, that's uh, a subject we could go on for a long time. It's almost another virtual panel discussion on, on data sharing, data ownership. Um, but thanks a lot for that. That, that was a lot of information again. Um, we've got about 10 minutes now to do some questions. Um, We've got some help with the question department. We have with us Nathan Morales, who's with BP. Um, he's nine years with BP. He's a senior rig automation engineer. He's been, before that was with Transocean and Weatherford. He's also the chair of the data controls and sensors subcommittee, which is a subcommittee of the advanced rig technology committee of the IDC. So Nathan, um, I see some questions coming in. Can you help us with uh, looking through some of those for us? Yeah, Robin, hey, thanks again for having me here today to share on this exciting news. Um, so we do have, um, we have a question from one of our YouTube viewers. And by the way, we were streaming on YouTube and LinkedIn. Uh, this, is, this is a question from Kuduro. Uh, it says, uh, you mentioned smart contracts. Can you please elaborate on how the DDR plus can be used for this user case? Uh, and I think that's probably for David and, uh, um, and uh, Robert. Okay, um, I, I will con consolidate uh, David's answer with mine. Um, so uh, I think the DDR advantage in smart contracts is, is a common data interface, and at least for the top code level, a common understanding of the states. 
Uh, it's also designed to be digital from the start, uh, so that means we can leverage uh, all the new cool stuff that is that is available for that, uh, including the metadata, which is very important for the smart contracts. Uh, data needs context to do that. So the DDR plus output can be can be fed into smart contracts built on the blockchain uh, with very little tweaking, as in none. Uh, there's a number of use cases already out there, uh, including invoicing for work completed and ultimately getting paid automatically and for building trust in the intercompany anonymized benchmarking. So uh, the DDR plus uh, is, is an important fact with that also because you don't need to redo your work if you change rigs or change clients. Uh, as noted, the DDR Plus is just one building block for smart contracts. And I would highlight here that another initiative in this area is the soon to be announced officially the RIG state definition recommendations uh, that ART is, is going to take on in the, in the very near future. So David, do you want to add something to this? No, I think you covered that. Um, and just generally that standard digital description can feed into smart contracts uh, that can be built in a standardized way, yeah. Great, thanks. Uh, you mentioned uh, during, when you mentioned smart contracts before, David, you mentioned blockchain. It does, I guess there are smart contract systems that don't require blockchain. Is there, is there, is there a, um, a variety of systems that can drive smart contracts? I am not a massive expert on this. There, there are yeah. bigger experts out there. Um, but uh, yeah, this, this, the um, blockchain is a tool to, to build trust. Um, we're talking here not in the Bitcoin sense of unpermissioned or where, where anonymous people are exchanging um, wealth, uh, if you like, or Bitcoins. Um, we're talking about the permission blockchain, which is a lot lighter and um, uh, a lot more straightforward when, when we trust the uh, the parties um, that are involved. Uh, it's the permission blockchain. Changing wealth. That sounds like a novel oil field idea these days. But look forward to that. <laughs> right, I, don't okay. you, you, yeah. I don't know whether virtual currencies are considered wealth. I guess they are, right? They, they have a value on any one day. Yeah. Okay, back to you, and Nathan. Back to the question box. Okay, so we have yeah we have another question from one of our another YouTube viewer, uh, Fred Florence. Uh, I think everyone knows Fred uh, well within our industry. So welcome, Fred. Um, is automating rig state detection accurate? Uh, does it require much effort to quality check or control the results? I guess uh, we can point that towards anybody in the audience or any any of the panelists uh, that we have. Yeah. So. Um... I can take that one saying that the digital, uh, the automation process is, is really good for some process that uh, we know, we know 100% what's going on the rig. For example, if we're tripping in, we know we're tripping in, but we don't know if it's restricted, unrestricted speeds because uh, there's a lot of challenge to get, uh, to get uh, the accurate uh, information of the, of the controllable operation. In some case, for example, if we have a mud bucket being used during the operation of tripping in, we know there's another sensor, another flag that we can make the, this, this operation trig as a restricted speed. But there's some other uh, variables in the operation that we cannot capture. So we still need to do quality assurance. But I would say uh, in terms of 30% uh, of the, the rig states, uh, 30% would say, I'm, I'm, for example, I'm collecting 12 rig states. 30% of rig states is 100% is accurate. We don't have doubts. But the other rig states, the 70%, will have still people to take a look and to make sure the rig state is being collected uh, properly. So I guess rig state, it requires confidence in the data, which requires great sensors. And I know that the... Uh, and Robert will be familiar with this, our dance technology committee has been working on rig sensor stewardship. So how do we make sure that we've got the sensors that can provide that sort of data? Um, and then there's also, we'd like to comment, Robert, on rig state definition, because that's something that's, I know that's come up for discussion recently, and also as, as part of the uh, advanced rig technology committee as, as a potential project. 
Uh, yeah, the Rigsday definition, uh, it, it is a, uh, it's an interesting discussion always between parties. Uh, but uh, the fact, of course, is if you go to smart contracts and, and automating uh, that uh, what you say you do is actually measured and transmitted to the client who then has to recognize that that is actually what you're doing. Um, and if you have to redo that for every client or every rig, uh, that basically counteracts the fact of uh, having a very efficient uh, 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 procedure in place. And, and, and like Bernardo mentioned, 30% um, we know exactly what, we, what we're doing, 70% needs a human in the loop. Um, so uh, having at least a, a something in the middle that is an independent recommendation. Hey, if you say tripping, we mean all this, and that's nobody needs to discuss that anymore. That's a great help in focusing then on getting the seventy percent right. Um, and I think the the rig state detection plays a role in that. The sensors themselves, um, and that's what Nathan is is very actively working on right now, and and also Assad is uh, if if you're not trusting your sensors, if you don't know that they measure the right the right things, how then everything else down in the pipeline suddenly becomes. Uh, not questionable, but you have to do your other QA, QC checks. The earlier you do it, the more benefits you reap down the line. And, uh, and maybe Nathan, you can you can elaborate about about uh, all kinds of initiatives that are basically making sure that whatever comes in the DDR plus is trustworthy. Yeah, that's right, Robert. And you know we've set off initiatives uh, over two years ago to do this uh, rig sensor stewardship um, and, and where we would, you know, do more uh, appropriate uh, validation with the sensors to validate, you know, uh, how the sensors were performing, uh, their performance over the life of the asset, uh, starting with critical sensors and so forth. And we've had a large group of the industry come forth to participate and support that initiative. So it, it is very important uh, to your point to with rig states, um, and going forward so thanks guys thank you nathan um any more questions coming in yeah we have another one from fred uh this one is directed towards karma uh it says uh what feedback have you received from the rig hands good question uh, very little because we have talked we have got more feedback from operations guys the superintendents and the rig managers that are not on the rig side we ran it through them. So there was a process. So let me explain to you, before we even run the DDR plus, we send the format, right? Just like uh, no, no, no digitalized for portion. And we send it to all the rigs around the world. And then we say, this is the report what we are looking for, for a standardization, for completeness. Do you see that something is missing? Uh, do we, because you know, we have our own report. We want to make sure as much of our report is in there. So, there was positive feedback. No, I mean, every time you tell the rig that you're gonna, they're gonna have to do one less report, report <laughs> they are very excited about it. So, uh, but like I say, from the drillers and, and assistant drillers, we haven't got there yet. Uh, but we hope that here, when, uh, when the IDC decides that we wanna do a recap and figure out six months from today, maybe, you know, how the drilling contractors have, uh, have jumped into and decided to switch to the DDR plus, we will be more than happy to see you how we're doing and, and the progress that we're making. And maybe even share a little bit of if we're implementing those on our, on our contracts. So Karma, for the other, so you, for the people that have been involved, how have, how have they responded? Has it always been positive or is it, I wonder whether when you start to automate systems, whether some people feel that they're losing some of the control that they've had over the years? No, not at all, not at all. They, they understand, see, we have been working now pretty much two years on to the teaching them the G digital platform, right? Now you have your operational events. It, it is, we explain to them that even there is a time value when you're doing the IEDC report, because normally you, you wrote it in your tally book and until you got to an office or used, uh, you know, fill out the tower sheet, you probably say, okay, I started drilling at eight o'clock, I stopped at 12. Now there is operational events that tells you exactly, you start drilling at 8, 8, 18, and now you stop at, you know, 
3.45. So yeah. that, it makes the life much easier. And now we also don't have to be asking, do you do the BOP test or no? I mean, there is a soup code that allow us to help them with that. Now you were, you, it shows flat time in your death versus day curve, but I'm actually doing something and we know exactly what they are doing because of the soup code. So operations, there is, there has no been pushback on operations. It's just, like I say, it's a domino effect, right? They know this is what they, their only concern I will say is trusting the data, right? Because now they're gonna see a screen that automatically populates their ROP, you know, their BHA information is getting loaded and they have to push a button and agree to it. Yeah. So that, that trust is the one that we're gonna have to gain uh, through yeah. the rest of this year. Back to confidence in the data and good census. That's right. And that's why we're gonna run it parallel. In most of our locations around the world, the, the EDR company provide us with an electronic code, or electronic form of the DDR. And our guys trust that because they input it, but you know, depends who inputs the information and a, w what, what information do you pick, right? There is a lot of mistyping and I think Jonathan, uh, mm -hmm. we, we had an opportunity to work with Oxy a little bit and just brainstorming all around the DDR. Uh, huge concern is BHA information, right? And we can just talk about the bits. And if somebody mistyped a uh, serial number, now you don't have ways of, to compare the performance of that bit to the rest of the bits you just run in that same field. So it is really trying to get things at the beginning really well with your data, quality, accuracy, sensors, rig estate definition, which probably, you know why it has taken so long to deploy the rig estate definition? Because we can't get to an agreement and every operator has a mind on their own, which is okay, but, but yeah. we will have rig definitions out there for the people who would like to follow them. And then that's, that's a big step towards the efficiency and accuracy of the DDR class. Perfect. Thank you, Grant. That's a great point to finish on. Um, our time is up. I'd like to thank all our panelists. I'd like to thank all those people that submitted questions. Some of them I know we haven't yet got to answer. Um, so we will uh, answer those digitally. Um, please um, accept the offer of help, both from the IDC and from Karma, who said, give her a call if you want to know um, a bit more detail about her own experience with Parker. And um, so thank you very much. And we'll see you at the next virtual panel. Bye now.